Oh my goodness. I did it, you guys. I did it. Hola mi gente, good morning. It is eight o'clock in the morning and today might just be the day that we get to meet this baby because at 6.30 I woke up with my water breaking. <laughs> like my water actually broke. But unfortunately I'm 36 weeks, 36.2 weeks you guys. Uh, we were five days short of being able to give birth at the birth center. So for these past almost two hours, like hour and a half, um, the things that have happened is me trying to clean up because this water just kept trickling, like the bag of waters broke and it just kept trickling. And so got cleaned up, took a shower. As I was taking a shower, Casey was calling our insurance company because we still want to go to a hospital that can be like, at least let like midwife Lead. But then after all doing doing all of that, we found out that because this baby's preterm, a midwife is not going to see me. I'm going to be seen by a doctor. So it's pretty comical how I was just so adamant about like, no hospital, no doctor. I want an I want a midwife. I want a birth center. I want like the most natural physiological process for this birth. And because of the fact that I'm this early, it doesn't look like I'm going to get that. So I am honestly truly bummed. But I'm trying to like be positive and be like in good spirits because that's important for labor. So I'm just like, okay, that's cool. All right, today's, uh, what day is today by the way? Today's January 30th. So I'm like, all right, this kid, you know, gets to be born in January, <laughs> not in February anymore. We're gonna have a uh, earlier baby, that's cool. What else have we been doing? Oh, I did my makeup. I got ready. Um, it's funny because Casey and I, we've been planning a maternity shoot and it's not until like two weeks from now. Well, that's not gonna happen. So we're like, oh my gosh, let's try to get some photos in <laughs> like right before this baby's born. So that's that's why I did my makeup. I gotta change. Uh, we're gonna do the final photos. And you guys might be wondering like, wait, aren't you like having contractions or anything? I am like a little bit, but like, not even enough to be worried right now to be like we gotta rush to the hospital because from what i understand from what i've been learning once your bag of waters breaks you have like 24 48 hours before it gets really like scary yeah we're packing because i did not pack a hospital bag I don't know how long I'm gonna be there. So now we're packing a hospital bag because at the birth center it was just gonna be like, oh, you know, you come in, you give birth, and then like four hours later, you go home. I don't know how it's gonna be now that we have to go to a hospital. So we're like, all right, we're packing our bags. Isaac's still asleep. So we gotta call his dad and be like, hey, so I have to go to the hospital. Can you take Isaac? <laughs> but yeah, we did find a hospital, by the way. The one, a hospital that we wanna go to. And yeah, we're just gonna, Finish doing what we're doing. Wait to see for these contractions to get intense because my fear now that I'm trying not to be afraid of, but just to voice it, maybe it'll like release it, um, is that now because we have to go to a hospital, now we're gonna have to really be mindful and adamant about our wishes, about not receiving like just to have an unmedicated birth as much as we can because obviously things go crazy, it's out of our hands. But as as long as like everything's okay, you know, I don't wanna receive any kind of medication, any type of interventions, just like as natural as possible. But I know that that is probably not gonna happen. I have to be flexible because of the fact that this baby's preterm. So that's kind of what I'm trying to wrap my head around right now and trying to like be like, okay, it's okay. It's okay, we're gonna see our baby sooner. Yay, like a whole month sooner. <laughs> and then last night, it was so crazy because this baby was kicking and moving like so much. Like the baby was moving so, so much that I even, like in the middle of the night, I told Casey, I was like, uh, cause I got, like he had his hand on my belly and I'm like, do you feel this? This baby wants to come out now. Like the, the way that this baby was moving was like, this baby's trying to come out. <laughs> and I called it and then a few hours later I wake up because there's like warm fluid coming out. So I'm like, oh my God, I think my water just broke. So yeah, that's what's going on. Wish us luck. It is now 9, 19. 
So it's like almost three hours since the water broke and uh, Tiff's having contractions, but we're still timing it. We're not quite in active labor just yet, so playing in it cool and smooth. And it's funny because Tiff was like, you're totally frazzled right now, Casey. And I'm like, I'm not frazzled. I'm totally not frazzled. I'm, you know, Playing it cool and smooth. She's convinced that I, I am. I am excited though. I am super excited. You know, I'm just trying to be ready for all things. But she's like, just sit down and eat. It's okay. And I'm like, I gotta take the towels. I gotta do this and just, just be ready. I am excited though. Yeah, look at this. Isaac gave me this for Father's Day one year. Coming full circle. Cheers, baby. Cheers. What's up, Isaac? Yeah, it's happening a lot sooner than expected. How'd you feel about all the news and commotion this morning? That was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You excited? Yeah. Yeah. You, I think you're the calmest out of everyone, huh? Mm -hmm. Like you, you feel like I'm, I'm excited and yeah. frazzled. You're frazzled. Yeah. <laughs> everyone thinks I'm frazzled. How's mom handling it? You think she's handling it all right? She's pretty chill. Yeah. She's pretty chill. Uh, only me? I'm the only one that's frazzled. You know, I'm timing contractions and the visualizations of that. What happened, baby? Yeah. Did you need something? I was gonna ask you if I could play. No, no. <laughs> I was gonna ask you if I could play VR. Of course. <laughs> sure, you can. In the meantime. Wait, did you finish packing for your dad? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was saying that the visualization for these contractions is like in the movies when there's like a parameter breach and then there's the alarm sounding and it goes like. Like that's kind of like how that's the how they feel. feel. Oh, interesting. Like it like gets small and then it gets like a little bit gradual and then it goes back down. So I'm like, cool. And these are these contractions are way different from any other like Braxton yeah. Hicks or no, anything. Braxton right? Hicks don't hurt. Like these are like a little bit painful. Cool. Yeah, so I've been I've been uh, timing them and they they're lasting between like 25 seconds ish. They're coming every like two to five minutes okay two to two to four minutes so I'm like they're coming pretty frequently but they're not lasting that long <sighs> yeah i don't know i'm like oh my gosh this is so cool so this is what labor is like oh yeah this is your first too <laughs> this is my first time getting to go through this i've already soaked through three underwear dang two panty liners you gotta bring a whole closet with you i know well the ones that i'm wearing so luckily i bought these period underwears preparing for postpartum, like bleeding, because you bleed for a long time after you give birth. I already like soaked through one of those and it's a super, super soaker one or whatever, like the super intense one. And I have one left that's in the bag that we're packing. So I'm like, okay, don't be soaking through no more of these. Please no more water, no more amniotic fluid coming out. We're doing our photo shoot now. <laughs> it's funny that this is what we're doing now. Oh yeah. This is the first time we're recording our actual setup because we've been doing this once a month since three months. Yeah, but we, we missed, missed a couple months. months. Oh yeah, November, yeah. We missed November. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get this going because okay. the are getting closer. All right, let's do it. And I, I just I keep trickling water. So I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's probably not a good thing. So we gotta do this. Yeah, let's do it. It is 1 p.m. now. We're still at home. Getting ready to leave though. Everything's already packed up in the car. Isaac's stuff is packed up. Ready to go to his dad's. I've been timing my contractions and I've been having them consistently two minutes apart, but they only last like less than 30 seconds long. And so I don't know, from the things that I'm reading, it's like, oh, you should go to the hospital when your contractions are 45 seconds to a minute long. So I'm like, eh, close enough. We should head out. <laughs> so. We're about to head out. How are you feeling, hubby? Pretty good. Calm. Cool. Oh yeah. I'm collected. You're calmly frantic. It's so cute. I could see you like trying not to stress, but you totally are stressed. I'm not stressed. <laughs> you are. I don't think I'm that stressed. You're I, also I'm in denial. Really, well, I think there's definitely like a bit of adrenaline going on. Yeah. Not frazzled. You were earlier. No, like no. earlier this morning, you totally were. It was really cute. Shall we? Let's go. Let's go, baby. You're doing a great job in there. Keep going, keep kicking, keep making things happen. 
All right, so at the hospital now, and uh, Tiff got uh, in, she's inside, and she's in triage is the term, triage. And basically, um, she's awaiting to be seen by a doctor to basically figure out if she can be admitted here. So the idea is to still give vaginal birth, but we don't want a C-section. And so we're already getting a little bit of pushback on that. Like they're already wanting to basically say, oh yeah, let's get you into C-section, let's get this baby out. And Tiff's putting her foot down, doesn't want that. And because of COVID restrictions on all that, um, kind of stuck outside, can't go anywhere. Feels weird, feels like I should be doing something, but I don't think I have anything to do. Waiting to be let in to go see Tiff. Just took my COVID test. And yeah, just waiting, a lot of waiting here went and grabbed uh, our overnight luggage and uh, just I'm so bored waiting and it's real cute that Isaac uh, keeps texting me and calling me to kind of check up in see how everything's going oh one second mom <laughs> <laughs> I told you real quick okay, okay. It was funny because as soon as he answered, I had to <laughs> put a thermometer in my mouth. How are you feeling, my wifey? Warrior. I'm a warrior. My warrior. It's 9 o'clock. Now it's 9.05 p.m. Lots of stuff been happening. They initially wanted to give me Pitocin to induce my labor, but then I got an ultrasound and they saw that the baby was smaller than what we think. So they're saying baby's looking more like 34 weeks instead of 36 weeks. It's a huge difference. That's a two week difference. And yeah, like it's a big difference in development too. So because of that, they gave me a steroid shot to help the baby's lungs be okay by the time they come out. And because of that, uh, like the steroid treatment or whatever, it takes, I guess some time, like there's two doses and there's like 12 hours in between each dose mm -hmm. or something so they're trying to like buy time for this to kick in which means they're trying to stop my contractions and so they gave me a pill for that and then they're also upping my fluids so the more hydrated I am the more they'll space out the contractions because I am still getting some contractions we're just gonna wait and see after the steroids kick in or whatever I'm also getting a whole bunch of antibiotics because of the fact that my water broke I'm on bed rest now I had to use a bedpan for the first time in my life which is so <laughs> gross so I can't stand up I can't I can't even like sit up fully because then like amniotic fluid comes out we need to keep that in to yeah, for the baby for the baby and then I I was educated and the nurse said that my body just keeps producing more amniotic fluid if it needs to, which I never heard heard of that. But yeah, I got poked so many times, like, oh my God, I got blood drawn from here. They tried putting in the IV here, it failed and it hurts like hell. They ended up doing it here, but they also, the first time they tried here and then they just took out blood here. Owie. <sighs> so, just gonna have to wait. Probably gonna be here for a couple days to buy time for all these drugs to kick in, I guess. I don't know. It's literally so funny how I wanted the the most natural birth ever, and this is like the most opposite ever. Well, no, I guess most opposite would be a C-section. We're still hoping for a vaginal delivery. Yeah, we don't want a C-section. But still, like, it's just like, okay, I give up. Cool. What else do you want to pump me with? All right, let's do it. <laughs> it's an interesting turn of events because at 6 30 this morning I was like oh my god my water's breaking baby's coming oh my god baby's coming going through contractions here and there but then there's space out and then they don't last that long but then like the ones that I've been getting here and in, in this bed they've been getting stronger so I'm like what's happening I don't know but it's fascinating though just taking it step by step moment to moment and uh, hoping for the best you're lucky though because you get to eat that is true. I'm so lucky, I'm starving. How how was them Jellos? Yeah, so I got two Jello snack packs. That was my dinner and my lunch. I'm so <laughs> hungry. I'm gonna go to sleep now. I'm trying to because people keep coming in all the time, so I'm trying to like rest as much as I can while they're not in here. Alrighty. Good night. Good night. Love you. You're doing fantastic.
My goodness, I did it, you guys. I did it. 